my name is Mirella Panekovshansky, and I'm hard user of Facebook. So that might be the reason why I was invited to to present on this session. I'm also an activist. Uh, I've been working with various uh, NGOs for 20 years. Uh, and I really, really like to use Facebook uh, for my organizations. And I just want to share with you some of the tips uh, which might work uh, as well for your organizations. So this session is not about privacy. It's not about data collection. It's not about, uh, you know, all the controversial issues connected with Facebook, although they are very important and I guess you will be uh, talking about them or Erin mentioned in her session uh, in the morning some of the, the topics uh, but I will would like to focus purely on the uh, uh, tool Facebook as a tool for for your organization so let me uh, let me share a few slides with you and I will ask you to comment on everything which you you will see so we would like to ask what facebook can do for your organization uh, first of all some numbers why we think facebook is important of course because of the big numbers uh, of course depends on the country uh, there are more facebook users in some countries it's more popular uh, depends on some age groups, uh, but in all over the world, people know what Facebook is, people uh, use Facebook. So that's the main reason uh, you can use it uh, for your organization. Uh, you can see that uh, in the US and Canada, uh, the numbers are not growing so fast, uh, but in, for example, Asia, uh, still more and more people uh, join Facebook and still more and more people use it so it might be also a chance for for your activism for your organization uh, to 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 use it. Uh, I would like to talk about uh, three types of uh, activities connected to Facebook uh, or where Facebook can uh, help your organization to grow, to be more active, to, to have more fans. So the fundraising, the engaging, and the organizing um, uh, issues. Uh, let's start with fundraising. Uh, here we have some numbers from Facebook from 2019. Uh, if, and you can see that more than $2 billion were uh, raised for uh, personal causes since 2015 uh, and um, one billion was uh, was oops sorry sorry, sorry. Uh, people have donated or started a Facebook fundraiser it was more than 45 uh, million slots so we will probably have more data at the end of 2020 uh, but let's say that the, the numbers are quite impressive. So means that Facebook as a tool for fundraising is working. You can really uh, raise some funds through Facebook and you can make it a part of your uh, fundraising strategy. Um, there are several examples of uh, organizations which raised uh, millions of, of uh, dollars for for their causes uh, those are um, examples from united states where of course uh, it was possible very early because not in all the countries around the world it's possible to have this uh, facebook donate button we will talk about it later but there are some good examples of organizations uh, who showed uh, like veterans like hospital or or no kid hungry uh, they collected really good money for for their um, activities for the, their causes however i would like to share one uh, fundraiser from poland uh, which is confirmed by facebook as the uh, biggest 
fundraiser in Central and Eastern Europe. Uh, it's actually it's a bit sad history um, because in 2018 uh, we had the the very sad um, uh, economy. The, the event was very very nice the great orchestra of christmas charity uh, which is one of the biggest polish ngo uh, and they are they have um, the big 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 uh, events uh, on january each year from 20 more than 20 years and they are collecting money through thousands and thousands of volunteers across poland uh, for children for hospitals uh, and they are always organizing each big city in Poland. They organize um, an event, uh, musical event, uh, or, or you know some other event where they collect money. And there was uh, uh, on the right you can see the man uh, with um, with a beam, uh, and this is the mayor of Gdańsk, uh, Paweł Adamowicz. Uh, he attended this musical event in Gdańsk and unfortunately a mad person went into the stage and stopped him with a knife. And it was a shock for uh, all, the Pol all Poland because he was a very well-known uh, person, very engaged uh, in, in, um, in the local community and in local government. Uh, so uh, one lady from Gdańsk uh, invented um, a fundraiser uh, saying that, okay, so uh, let's um, uh, fill the last canister uh, of, of Meyer Adamowicz because he was collecting this money before the event. And he wanted, she wanted to collect uh, like 1,000 zloty. If you divide by four, you will have it in euro, so around three hundred euro and uh, because the, this event the whole event was so touching and people were so angry and disappointed and frustrated uh, and they started to you know donate to this fundraiser and slowly slowly uh, it was uh, really really big 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 fundraiser and at the end as you can see more than 14 million Polish lotte was raised uh, for for this um, orchestra of, of Christmas, a great orchestra of Christmas charity, in the name of of uh, Mayor uh, Adamowicz. So this was a really uh, big mm, event, and everybody remember it. And it also helped other or Polish organizations uh, because more and more people uh, knew that you can donate through Facebook. So it was really uh, also this, this double meaning of this uh, fundraiser because after that, um, uh, Polish organizations and Polish people were more likely to uh, to donate uh, for for uh, fundraisers through Facebook. Uh, in order to create a fundraiser on Facebook, you need to have a so-called uh, Facebook donate button. Uh, as I told you before, I know that it's not available in all of the countries. I'm not sure whether uh, all of the European countries already have it. Um, in Poland, it was introduced in uh, January 2018. Uh, first, it was available only for the four biggest organizations. Then it was available for for smaller as well. <clears throat> and uh, there is a um, really, um, um, I mean, those who were first organizations to have such a button and to organize fundraisers were really, really successful. Uh, after that, after let's say three years, two years, uh, there are many organizations who have this button. So the lower uh, donation, uh, so the donation is lower, the average donation is lower. And to be honest, uh, I receive every week, uh, you know, requests from many of my friends to, to join a fundraiser. And uh, before probably I, I uh, 
paid like 50 zloty maybe and now I, I, I give them 20 zloty because there are so many of those uh, fundraising events so <coughs> I'm sorry <coughs> this is the uh, if in your country there is no such a button and it will be introduced or something uh, please uh, you know remember that if you are first you may uh, really um, have some advantage before other organization uh, <coughs> will join it. And if we are talking about this button, of course, you can have it on your web page. You can have it, uh, you can add it to your uh, Facebook posts. Um, you can add it to your Facebook ads because when you are preparing the, the paid uh, ads, you can also add the, the donate button. Uh, you can use <coughs> this um, button during uh, page live streams, which also might be very successful if you have if you host a, um, a live streaming. Uh, and of course, this so-called birthday fundraisers, <coughs> when you ask your members, your <coughs> volunteers, your friends and family to establish a fundraiser for your organization. <coughs> Uh, because they have they have a birthday. Um, okay, so I just want to stop uh, here and maybe ask uh, Edwin if uh, you have some good or bad experience uh, from fundraising uh, through Facebook, uh, or did you raise some money for your organization, or you are not using it at all? Um, that's a very good question. I also I. <laughs> really like the tips that you already gave because we have had one instance um, not using well using Facebook directly but this is already a next level what we had done in the past is um, around the end of March beginning of April we were contacted on our platform by a uh, maybe short introduction we have uh, there to be gray as our um, social media campaign and mostly a Facebook campaign. It's like 95% um, of what we use as a platform. So I definitely share your experience there as well. Uh, and we were approached by a, um, uh, like, how do you say it, graduating director who was making his uh, final movie um, for his uh, for his university as a study project on polarization. And he asked us, and he, he needs to raise funds for that project as well. And because the film was on polarization, which is the topic that we cover, um, we really wanted to help him. And so we had a, a couple of experiments trying to direct people uh, to his fundraiser. Uh, we had uh, we have our own Facebook group, so we uh, advertise the story there. We had very direct ads on Facebook, um, in which we so we did a lot of different experiments. Uh, the direct Facebook ads, for example didn't work so much like we tried it we tried to make it snappy and, and get the attention but we kind of realized i guess that for people to um actually donate they probably need a couple of reminders afterwards um or they need to feel really engaged with what's going on before they actually um give money and since it wasn't directly for us uh that's the greatest organization people didn't necessarily know the initiative um in a later stage while we were helping the fundraiser um, we actually did a interview and a big portrait profile on our website with uh, the director himself and just asking about the process asking about the idea asking really about his personal motivation and make it a very personal piece and at the end and throughout the entire article which was on our website we just had buttons saying like hey if you like this idea if you like his story you can help, you can donate. Um, and then we just promoted the, his, his portrait and with the, with the photography on our Facebook pages. So not directly mentioning donate or not, but just asking people to read his story. And I wasn't necessarily expecting it, but in the end it turned out of all the things we tried, that one worked best. Um, it was from that point onward when we started promoting his... Um, his portrait, which would require people to read it, to go through it, and then to follow that call to action to actually donate. And that one worked. It was from that point onward that the director 
gave us feedback saying like, hey, we're getting donations from people none of us of the team personally knows. So that was quite an um, empirical surprise for us to, to see that and to experience yeah. that. Okay. I just just want to share um, uh, the Facebook uh, with you. I don't know if you can if you can see it uh, because this is the the, the web page of this uh, great uh, orchestra of Christmas uh, uh, and and look how many fundraisers. Uh, the, the so-called birthday fundraisers, which are the small amounts, uh, 750 is lot, it's, you know, 200 euro. But look how many of them they they have started and how many people ask their friends to donate something for uh, for this, this organization, which is extremely popular in Poland. Uh, yeah, so, so just to just to uh just to show you uh, how it how it works um okay so uh, are is somebody i mean from from our participants do you have any good or bad experiences from uh fundraising through facebook and would you like to share it do you use it in your organization do you have this uh fundraising uh, donate button or or not you can type or you can ask noemi to put you <coughs> on the voice hello hello who do we have do i know somebody i will ask somebody <laughs> uh, who do we okay noemi Yes, don't be shy, please share. I know that not in all countries you have this donate button. So if somebody uh, has already used it, please share. Oh, perfect. We have Francesco who will, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, tell us. Uh, Was it good or bad experience? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, uh, I knew this uh, this function, but I never use it. Uh, I'm actually checked now if it's possible. <laughs> I need to do it just to be sure. Uh, but uh, yeah, I never tried, and I think that I, I think that I will do it. My concern was more related to you know uh, maybe some rules that in Italy can uh, maybe. Uh, not go against but you know it's a, a wave of money that maybe is coming so how can be taxed or whatever the mm -hmm. first thing that came in my mind was uh, was that one uh so yeah i don't know how is it in, in poland or uh, in other country uh but seems that there is not so much things to do but i will check it but my concern was related to that to the stream okay. of definitely you have to talk to your accountant but uh mm -hmm. In Poland, and as far as I know, it's all around the world. All of the money from uh, which you raise uh, are going into your account, and you receive a monthly report or daily reports, so you can see how much money. And once uh, in a month or once in a two, two months, you receive this this quote from uh, from Facebook. So, so it's not uh, like paid every day, but uh, once a month. When, when there's enough money, you will receive this. Okay, Iga, you say that you have this button, but not many uh, fundraisers organized by our fans. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is, of course, uh, depends on the organization. It's much more difficult if you are a think tank, uh, because it's not in like an activity organization uh but it's it's easier if you are having many volunteers and many fans and many activists around the country because then you can ask them to to organize it for example okay yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe to add in a bit i also think that um, it really depends on besides the organization itself it also depends on what you're asking them to fund i think uh, if you know if you're a clear ngo with a very clear mission i think that by itself will already help 
Um, but for example, the movie that we helped promote, that was a Kickstarter and Kickstarter can have such an important momentum with it because um, there's something really concrete at the end of the line and they know exactly where that money is invested in and they know like if I donate now, I help to realize the movie, for example. Yeah. And all, I think that all that sort of things can really help um, yeah. getting that donation flowing. Yeah, it's of course the, the part of art of fundraising, how to you know, frame your message. Uh, is it more concrete enough? Is it, uh, you know, clear for, for your people? Fernanda. Yeah. You have yes, I, ha I, have a, no, I have a question that is pretty much what you just started saying. It's like you read my mind. <laughs> uh, that if in your experience you find that when you fundraise for a specific purpose, it's, it's, it's better, has better results than for the whole company or the whole organization yes, yes definitely i mean uh, for people's mind it's always uh, easier to understand that we are collecting uh, money for example to buy uh, some i don't know books for for unprivileged children yeah and we will uh, deliver it to five schools uh, where we where we work uh, and it's easier for them to understand that uh, the message that we are collecting money for our activity regarding children. Yeah. So they, they like to see the numbers. And especially if you say, OK, so we buy the, like 100 books or we uh, we are collecting to uh, to have 100 hours of uh, psychological uh, con uh, consultation for immigrants uh, or, or something which is very very concrete and you can show the results so so people can see that you really raised and and 100 uh, books will be delivered or you know something so so yes after when you have really good fans you may try or you have um, for example alumni of your uh, programs you can ask them to support your organization in general but it's for the first fundraisers uh, i would recommend to have very very specific goal thank yeah, you I, okay um Mirella, what you're saying i think that really relates to um whether you as an ngo how much you have like broader society as an audience like if you lean more to being an online platform of storytelling and going even like the magazine or media direction then uh, you know membership models suddenly maybe become much more attractive and it's more directly that you can actually like have a fan base but if you're more an ngo on the background supporting social workers for example it, it might be much harder to uh, have that initial appeal with broader audiences with people who are not directly involved in the work you do. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's right. And uh, But, you know, you have to try. You have to try your to prepare your first fundraiser. You have to see how it works. Uh, it's not that you put it on your fan page and it will work magically by itself. Absolutely not. Of course, no. it's of course, a very, uh, yeah, because sometimes people think, okay, so we have a fundraiser now, we are waiting for people, for, for, for our uh, fans to, to pay. It's not, uh, so you have to have some information around it, some campaign, uh, and so on, and so on. Okay, so let's go back to uh, the presentation. And... Uh, and talk a little bit about community engagement. Of course, this is there are some very uh, simple rules which which you probably already know that you have to talk to your community. That it cannot be uh, one way communication only. That you, I mean, to engage them, you need to give them some of the some possibilities to to participate to interact with you um so using also some interactive activities i don't know why but people like polls even stupid polls even if you ask them some sometimes very stupid questions they 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 really like to click so why don't use it in uh, in your work contests 
of course sometimes it's uh, also a legal issue uh, in uh, of facebook and how it can be organized so it's good to to um, uh, uh, have some legal opinion before you organize your first contest but definitely uh, it's something which engage your your community your fans and uh, well good pictures and good graphics unfortunately some some will say fortunately we live in an era of of uh, pictures we live uh, in an era of photos so um, the, the first volunteer if you have somebody in your organization uh, should be a, a someone who, who can prepare you really good graphic stuff and nowadays it's not really so uh, difficult if you know canva the the free uh, tool for for preparing um, graphics uh, you can use it but of course if you have a professional graphics uh, you it, it's always it's always uh, uh, good um, I will I will show you also um, uh, I will show you on Facebook one of the uh, fun page uh, of the organization called Cosmos for Girls, which is a foundation. Uh, I'm one of the co founder. Uh, three years ago, we founded this to, to empower younger girls. Um, and it's editing also um, the, the bi monthly uh, paper magazine for girls 6 to 12. Uh, and from the very very beginning we had a graphic designer uh, which which projected all of the the graphics we used so uh, if you see the web page uh, the website uh, and you see the uh, the Facebook uh, everything should be uh, you know coherent and all the graphics should have the logo and the color and and so on and so on and <clears throat> We, we were really praised by many uh, our fans for, for really good graphic graphic designers. Um, okay, so Edwin, any um, tips for engaging your community uh, through uh, Facebook? I, I, I have to fully underline uh, the graphics uh, and illustrations are king. It, it, it's completely true. I've had like on our media platform, I'm 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 a writer first and everything else second. And you just know, like if you have a piece that you've written and you really like it yourself, but if the visual in any way or the photo in any way isn't catching enough, you you could have written masterpiece and no one will find out. Basically, mm -hmm. uh, any other way around, if there's good graphics, then um, it 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 works. And I think that's always very important to see. Um, and I, I, for example, we had recently helped a partner organization in promoting their work. And in the end, it, the post we made on them scored very much below our average engagement rate. And honestly, like you don't know scientifically what caused it, but from the first moment we felt like the visuals they had weren't good enough. And that's so sad because it was such a good story. Um, so it really, Proved again how important these initial ideas are. Like on, on a on a big timeline like Facebook, you need to grab someone's attention within like three seconds. And a visual is a way to do that. And a good written line usually isn't unless it's visually very much. Um, yeah. Um, just just uh, yeah. yeah. Starting even from the from the cover uh, photo. Uh, uh, let's see. Let's see some of the biggest organizations. Amnesty International. You don't have to yeah. go further. You just see the power of of the cover photo, or yeah, WWF. Um, <laughs> I would definitely say like following like this this picture of Amnesty is such a great example. And yeah. I think if there's one thing we could always emphasize that in meetings and conferences that we that we meet and talk about these subjects. One thing that I would always um, bring to mind to everyone is just um, 
embrace creativity, embrace artists, embrace photographers, graphic designers. Sometimes we can get caught up in the functions and uh, science and the budgets of it too much. And we all need those, but in the end, it's creativity and these kind of visuals that can really, really make a difference. Yeah, and here are WWF. And look, it's interesting because here they don't have donate button, they have shop now. So, and, and if you see Amnesty, let's go back to Amnesty. Um, let's see. You will probably see, uh, no, he, they have learned more here. So it's also, it's also interesting, but, but really pictures and good, good graphics and infographics, like you can see, which tell us more than words are really really important so it's something you need to think about uh, when you prepare any campaign any of your activities that's the how it works in the world so we can you know disagree but still still it works like this one and Mirella I see like a very interesting uh, remark from Adrian on the chat Okay. about the challenges that some NGOs uh, may encounter. So he, mm -hmm. he says that some of our donors and partners kill our page with all their texts they make us to use, including the three languages. And uh, ideas what, how to deal with this? Well, this is not only, you know, the, the Facebook issue, I would say it's a great greater issue of dealing with, with your partners and but also we, how your website looks or how your how your fan page looks and what are the rules for example of you know putting uh, stuff from your partners because you may have you may agree that for example you will put one uh, post uh, per month about uh, your common um, work but if they want to put some commercial uh, you know issues you can say no um and and in your website uh, it's always good to have you know this, this one place when you put all the information about your partners about uh, your cooperation and um, and you put all the information there but i would say that they cannot impose to have uh your website as, as as you know as theirs i don't know edwin if you agree <laughs> yeah i was <laughs> I, I i really feel Adrian's comment this is something that we from the beginning have uh, struggled with as well and what we've been and you know it, it really depends on the donors and the partners of course that are giving you money but from the beginning we've been very defensive um and starting conversations of saying like in the end if they want a specific line or a specific text present in, on the very front of a Facebook page, I would just start the conversation with them saying like, this won't be helping you and this, this won't be helping us because in the end on a Facebook page, for example, you want engagement is the prime thing you want to go after and all these kind of um, secondhand interests, they, they, they will destroy the effort in the end anyway. And for example, we've had a similar thing with um, an EU project that we're part of, and going through like the user, um, like the the agreements that we sign, the initial lines said that you know we uh, want EU logos present on everywhere, but we were like, yeah, if we will present EU logos on our Facebook page, that will just kill the entire effort. So from the beginning, we got the funding. We went. Um, to our contact person said like we we don't want to do this that we will have the EU logo on, on, on many pages but it can be present everywhere and we made the case and they understood um of course it yeah might be, do, they don't, yeah it that, might be that, more difficult problem. with big donors it might be more difficult with big donors as adrian uh, wrote us but definitely uh, i mean we've had experience yeah. with the eu and i think they're quite a quite a big donor and it might be really rely on the contact person. I know that within the EU and within the commission, every direction can be very different in how open they are to these kind of things. And maybe we're lucky that the, our contact person was very open to it. 
And I think they need to be. And if they're not, you know, have a conversation. Maybe it changes something in the long run because Adrian is definitely right. And these kind of demands from donors offhand, they can destroy an effort so yeah. much. And in the end, even counteract their own interest in, in, in this effort. Yeah. We, we, we had a little similar situation uh, with one of our donors. And what we do, we talk to other organizations which receive the money from the same donor. And we had a common uh, statement, uh, which was pretty successful. So, so we all agreed that there are some rules uh, regarding logo and so on and so on. And we we went to this this big donor with with you know a common statement. So maybe this could be some help for you if you find other beneficiaries from your big donor. <laughs> if we would have an EU logo on. All, on all of our publications and on our banner page and whatever, it, I, I, I don't think we would ever um, have any success or any engagement at all. Such a logo can kill enthusiasm very quickly, I think. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so the, the, the last part, um, it's organizing on Facebook. Um, some, uh, un, I would say that Facebook groups are uh, under uh, appreciated by many organizations. And we know, especially now, there, there are new tools for admins. I didn't have time for, for going through all the <coughs> news they, they propose. Uh, but what's the better uh, if you have a fan page and a group for your fans, for your, you know, staff even, um, that in a group your posts are much more visible uh, and if someone wants to see them, they want to see all of them and not only like 1% or 10% of your fans uh, which see your organic posts if they are not paid posts. So, so I would really encourage you to create a group for your organization, for your fans. It depends on what, what you are doing. The only thing is that the group has to be alive. So you need to have a person who will uh, find uh, some interesting articles, interesting stuff, who will be a moderator of this group, because it's, it's similar to the fundraiser. It will not uh, be alive by by itself. So you need someone who, who will be in charge of, of this Facebook group. Uh, and of course, uh, you can um, have uh, this, this so-called and so loved by all the designers, user-generated content. So, uh, uh, so the, the content created by your fans. And for example, in this Cosmos for Girls, uh, we really received many pictures, uh, uh, drawings by young girls or pictures uh, when they are uh, reading our magazine. And we are really lucky we had uh, many material to, to put on our um, website. Uh, and here, the, the, the small tip uh, uh, around saved materials, I will, I will, um, I will show you. I want to show you. Uh, I will show you my Facebook. Uh, there are no secrets, as far as I know. Um, but this is really, this is really uh, a useful, useful uh, tool. If you have here so-called saved which means they are like a bookmarks for for facebook and uh, i have several uh, you know collections of of my bookmarks uh, and for example uh, here for one of my organization i have shared bookmarks so it's not only me who are bookmarking some interesting uh, articles which I uh, want to use on our fan page uh, in the future. But there are two other people, and I can inv invite some of my friends uh, to, to share it. 
And also I had, uh, when I went to, I wanted to go to Jordan, for example, uh, uh, and I was uh, uh, inviting my friends who were there to, to put some, you know, uh, stuff uh, about Jordan, about uh, Petra, uh, about, uh, I mean, about traveling to, to that part of the world. So it's really useful, uh, small tip that you can collaborate with your uh, colleagues and you can uh, have uh, saved many uh, interesting links, articles uh, in order to use it uh, further in, uh, in, in your web page. Um, and another, okay, another thing, it's CEO visibility. Uh, if you're a CEO of a big organization, uh, you are not a private person anymore. I mean, of course, if you can, uh, if you can uh, use uh, Facebook as uh, John Kowalski instead of Mirella Panekovshanska and be totally, uh, you know, no name, I mean, uh, only for your friends, that's okay. But usually, people uh, will uh, look at your private profile uh, because they know that you are um, CEO of some big organization. So your private uh, uh, posts, your private um, articles or your private views matters. And you may like it, you may dislike it, but well, that's uh, that's how it works. So uh, I would say that you can use it uh, in favor of your organization uh, and allow in your profile to uh, people uh, to have people who will observe uh, observe you instead of be your friends. Uh, so if you have some people you don't want to see your cat stuff you put on your Facebook but you want them to read some interesting articles on the topic you are, uh, your organization is dealing with only, um, they can observe you, which means that all of the public stuff you put on Facebook, public posts, uh, will be seen in their feed, but they will not see the stuff, uh, the cat stuff, which is only for, for your um, uh, friends. So it might also be a way to build the visibility of a person. Usually we have a, a, some, some charismatic uh, leaders of, of NGOs or at least the biggest organizations in Poland, they do have such a, such a people uh, who are in charge and people uh, want to observe them and people want to, you know, somehow interact in, uh, with them uh, in person, not only with the organization. So that would be the, the, my, my last tip, that you can also build the position of CEO or board members of the organization if you allow in their private uh, profiles to, to be so they can be followed, observed, and um, not, only, uh, not only befriended by, by people who, you know, they know only professionally. Okay, just comment. Uh, workplace from Facebook for our organization that cut down stuff on Facebook. We are able to get a free pro account and it has been fantastic during COVID times. It helps separate the personal from work. Well, I mean, good, good luck. <laughs> we, we all would like to have... <laughs> our lives personal and, and work life and professional separated sometimes it's possible sometimes it's less possible but uh, but um, yeah this this workplace if you don't have any other uh, collaboration common collaboration place might might work for for your organization organization as well uh, i don't know if edwin have some still have some tips regarding organization on facebook do you use some um i on organization wise i've tried many things but maybe this is a very personal thing also depending on your organization we're very small 
So in the end, every time we go for a Slack kind of extra tool, it ends up slowing us down more because we have to keep up with it every time instead of just directly contacting and mailing each other. But that, that's a very personal thing. Um, and when it comes to groups, um, we've, we've been experimenting with that as well a lot. And especially our Dutch, we have an, a, a Dutch and an English platform mm -hmm. at the same time. And especially our Dutch one has really helped increasing engagement and has really helped starting conversations that, you know, once your own page and platform becomes maybe too big, um, like, you know, the real conversations with contacts suddenly appear in your group. And that has been a wonderful uh, experience. But it, it, it does require a lot of time investment from you personally mm -hmm. as well. And that's, I guess, also where it comes in of, you know, be moderating such a group, and I'm moderating one with now over 800 members, and it's nearly impossible to separate it like privately versus work and yeah. trying to get your world together and doing it outside of working hours. That's definitely a balance to find uh, and consider. Yeah. Okay, so uh, are there any further questions? Um, regarding Facebook, uh, just to remind you, I was talking about possibilities of fundraising, of uh, engaging your members, your volunteers, your activists, <coughs> sorry, and, and about organizing uh, through Facebook um, something. So, uh, if, do you see any questions? Uh, some, yeah, Ricos, they also work with, workplace from Facebook easier to work compared to slack yeah definitely if people are you know familiar with with Facebook it's only one uh, step for them to to go to workplace I was thinking Mirella about this because we have here like uh, 20 people uh, attending the, the session and I wonder whether we have also a leader of an NGO or CEO and because from my perspective it, it's kind of um, challenging to uh, to be so aware of your brand online and how to you know how to divide uh, differentiate between your personal life and to be observed by by the other so i'm curious what are the uh, experiences of people who are actually leaders of the ngos maybe somebody wants to join us here yeah are you observed on Facebook, <laughs> followed? <laughs> or you deal only with your real friends and you leave this professional stuff to LinkedIn, for example, which is also, you know, a good way to somehow. <clears throat> don't, be, don't be shy, please join <laughs> us. I can show you still my private Facebook, <laughs> oh, you don't speak Polish, so <laughs> you will not. No, just just to just to show you this friends versus followers. Uh, see here, uh, I'm followed by 741 people, and those are people who I've met somewhere during my professional. Uh, some of them wanted to be my friend, some of them didn't, some of them want only to observe my public stuff. Uh, and I have my friends who are friends, really friends, uh, which so when I put my cat <laughs> on, on Facebook, they, they see only, uh, uh, my friends can only see it. So, so it's, it's possible somehow. Okay, if we don't have more questions and if we don't have more uh, examples from you, Edwin, what do you think we should finish our session? <laughs> oh, I see some comments here. Yeah. From mm. Katarzyna. Okay, sometimes it's difficult to face the opinions or hate of other activists who think that raising funds by an organization is forcing or making money. Um, okay, now um, what can I say? Haters will always exist. 
uh, but you know one of the management issues of running an NGO is fundraising you need to raise funds to you know fulfill your mission to 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 have more activities to uh, to have more social impact so you have to do it and Facebook is only a tool you can uh, you can sell you can uh, have a big donors you can have individual donors you can leave from grants it depends on on your fu fundraising strategy this mix well I, I work a lot with fundraising strategies with with NGOs so this fundraising mix uh, of tools and uh, you can use uh, to to raise funds it's different for uh, each organization sometimes you can have 90 percent from grants sometimes you have you can have 90 percent from individual uh, fund i mean individual um, people who, who, who will support your cause so uh, i i don't see it as a you know something with which you can be ashamed of uh, if you have clear transparent uh, policy of your reports uh, if you have uh, really uh, good communication okay we raised uh, 1000 uh, slotties so we will buy 100 books which will be distributed to five schools uh, i think it's very uh, clear for for your fans for your for your uh, members that you are not taking this money to to yourself one more from francesco and from adrian okay. you are not uh, active in personal it's a shame even if i am the manager of my ngo uh, facebook page well it's not a shame it's your you know your choice there's no obligation to be active on your Facebook page. It, it can be, uh, you can be active on, on your LinkedIn or in your Instagram. I mean, it depends on your will only. So I, I wouldn't say that all of the CEO should or all the managers should be active on their uh, private uh, profiles. But if they are active, it's, it's good to, you know, to decide uh, which stuff they put on as public stuff and which stuff they put as, as private friends only stuff. So, uh, um, maybe yeah. also, I think maybe for you, Francesco, personally, it's not the case, but I think nowadays in this time and age, every organization benefits from your NGO having a public face and not just, you know, role models for whoever you might be covering, but even like, and if it's not you, maybe someone else, like, Every, I think nowadays every organization benefits from not just being an anonymous logo necessarily. Mm -hmm. I, I think in the long term that helps and that's what we've been slowly doing uh, as well. Yeah, should NGOs start to build a boost budget into uh, line into the costs? It seems it's becoming harder to reach organically. Yes, it is. Well, Facebook is a company, it's not a charity. It gave us a donate button, but but you know it's a company, so their interest is to have, of course, to be paid for for the ads. Uh, and unfortunately, it's still. Uh, I mean, it's more and more uh, hard to to become organically. Even though for this Cosmos for Girls, I told you three years ago, we've reached. Um, 20,000 members without paying uh, anything. So I was in charge in that time. It was because of the huge boost we had uh, during our crowdfunding. Uh, it was one of the biggest crowdfunding also, but it wasn't on Facebook, it was on other platforms. We, we, we crowdfunded for the first uh, numbers of this uh, paper written magazine. Uh, and we we really had a good boost because of some celebrities who you know shared our post, uh, some actors and former prime minister who had a daughter and said, okay, uh, my daughter is an actress, but if uh, she came to me and said, okay, I want to be an engineer, I would I would of course support her. Uh, so you should support your girls whenever uh, whatever they want to be. Mm, 
so so we were lucky to have this this to build this community uh, without paying but after i mean i don't know what are your had been um i mean uh, what, what, what you see in facebook but i see that it's uh, more and more difficult to to work only organically yeah i mean i think that's an experience everyone shares and i mean i nobody knows how the algorithm exactly works but um i think it, that has a huge influence and i know that it's like a definite dilemma like should you start or not because as far as i'm aware and i've heard but that might be rumors so don't put me down on it like the minute you start it becomes even more difficult to get that organic reach so there might be this counter balance of do you want to go there or not and one of the only and, and this kind of trap that you i don't think in the age of social media at the moment can escape even though we might as society would want for that so um i think one way to kind of prepare yourself for not getting stuck in that loop is just spread your ngo to multiple platforms as well and know which audiences you reach on each plat each platform and that's a difficult time consuming and long-term process but i think um it's also dangerous to leave your organization or ngo hanging on one social media platform which you then always need to boost with budget lines in cost. I mean, if you're organizing fundraising and you can, you have the liberty to propose the budget yourself, and I would definitely try to get that line in. Um, you just risk the trap off from then onward in the rest of your future of an NGO, always gonna, that you're always gonna need that budget line. I mean, that's, that's our situation. Mm. Um, yeah, it's very interesting uh, comment from Diana that as president leader of NGO, it really helps to start building an online persona. Um, but yes, it feels like you are becoming a different version of you and have to filter. Uh, well, it's not a filter. You just talk about your friends. I mean, with your friends, you talk about your cats, but with some other professional uh, people, you talk about your, your issues. Uh, but it uh, also attract unwanted attention and interaction. Well, yes, I received some on LinkedIn, some unwanted uh, interaction from men, but you know, just delete, 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 and <laughs> and that's it. Probably it's not the experience Edwin will share, but <laughs> no, that's not, yeah, that's that's something. I mean, when this is a dilemma, I mean, I do personally share a lot, but I'm also very much aware that I'm just very lucky and privileged of being a white man in the Netherlands who his NGO also has a, quite a nuanced message. So I'm aware that I don't risk as much as many others do. And that makes the dilemma so much yeah. harder. So being a woman, sometimes it's a little bit harder, but still you can block, you can delete and just, you know, go on and it happens. I mean, poor, poor them. <laughs> it's not your, it's not your uh, problem. And here as just a small comment from me, we will have a session about being safe online and how to deal with these unwanted interactions and how to protect ourselves. So Diana, please join the session run by Julia. Um, <clears throat> I think it will be, I think it will be uh, the next week.